Prince William reportedly planned to extricate himself from Kate Middleton while she was informally laying the foundations for a wedding, unearthed reports claim. Back in 2007, the pair took a break from their relationship for several months. William had been photographed dancing with other girls in a London nightclub, which reportedly led to a confrontation with Kate. A friend of William's revealed to the Daily Mail at the time that while Kate was clinging on to the relationship, William was trying to leave. The friend reportedly said, Kate did everything she could to make him stay, playing a waiting game one minute and then hard to get the next. Just the other week, she said she intended to be photographed at as many places as she could without William to punish him for all those pictures that appeared of him clubbing with other girls. But William's heart just wasn't in it anymore. As she was planning the wedding, he was working out how to extricate himself. According to royal biographer Andrew Morton, the second in line to the throne had been unwilling to commit. Meanwhile, another royal source said that William was only 24 and simply wasn't ready to settle down. However, the pair did reunite after just a few months. It is believed the catalyst for their reunion was the concert for Diana in July 2007. It seemed that the time apart had made William realize what he had lost by dumping Kate. A close friend told biographer Mr. Morton, William realized what he really wanted in life. He thought he could do better, but realized very quickly what he had given up. Former BBC royal correspondent Jenny Bond pointed out how well Kate handled herself during the breakup. She told the documentary Prince William at 30, uploaded to YouTube in June 2012, that, she did not make a fool of herself and crucially she did not talk to the press. The couple got back together and three years later William proposed. Reflecting on her own experience of the breakup during their engagement interview, Kate said in hindsight she valued that time to learn things about herself. The couple got married in a beautiful ceremony in 2011 and went on to have three children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. After their marriage, historian David Starkey outlined why the royal wedding was so significant, and how Kate had helped the monarchy become ever more genuinely democratic. In an interview with entrepreneur Sir David Tang in 2011, Mr. Starkey said, I think the British monarchy became modern in another great crisis, in 1917-the height of World War I when what had essentially been a German royal house decided it was going to be English. At that point it starts marrying English men, and English women. But what is quite remarkable, is that it not only decides it is English in 1917, it does what the Chinese monarchy was not capable of doing, what the great empires of Europe were not capable of doing, it reconciles itself to democracy. It becomes a contradiction in terms, a democratic monarchy. He continues, I think what the wedding in the last few weeks has demonstrated is that it's becoming ever more genuinely democratic. At first, of course, it was a kind of oxymoron, it was a contradiction in terms, it was a clever selling line. I think the selling line is becoming real. However, he adds, Kate Middleton, of course, is not as common as all that. She is a woman of serious education, in fact the first seriously educated royal spouse of the 20th century. But she, of course, represents a world outside the palace, a world outside that privilege. She is a supermarket trolley princess. She can confidently walk down the aisle at Waitrose and pick things off in front of the television cameras, and still somehow contrive to be both common and princess. However, in other ways, the historian argues, Prince William and Kate Middleton are not special at all. He told The Telegraph in 2011 that the narrative that the wedding was revolutionary was absolute nonsense. He said, this isn't a new beginning for the monarchy, it's scarcely even a new chapter. Mr. Starkey reflected that many royal unions, before the accession of the German Hanoverian monarchs in the 18th century, actually did not follow class-bound tradition at all, 